Across this globe, the thundering voices of dictators are being heard. Germany has Adolf Hitler. Italy has Benito Mussolini. And the United States of America has Senator Huey Pierce Long. He's using his fiery brand of politics to appeal to the millions and millions who are out of work during these troubled times. Presidential hopeful Long has set up a third party movement. He calls it Share Our Wealth, and he wants to take money from the rich and give it to the poor. When Huey ruled the state of Louisiana, he put the people to work by building bridges, roads, a new capital, hospitals, and schools where he educated the children with free textbooks. But with Huey's benevolence comes a darker side that threatens democracy, as when he called up the National Guard and took over the city of Baton Rouge. For Huey Long, Louisiana was just the beginning. His Share Our Wealth program is picking up steam as he crosses America with his eye on the presidency, touching the hearts and souls of the masses, and threatening the reign of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. How many of you are fed up with that crowd in Washington? Not fed, I didn't say fed, but fed up! Well, that's why I'm running for president. Yes, 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 the Republicans are skinning us from the ankles up and the Democrats from the ear down. Yeah. But with God's help, our share of the wealth society is going to skin that good. Is America ready for Huey P. Long? Only time will tell. Yeah, what is it? Ross? Oh. Ross? Jesus, what time is it? Oh. No, no, we we'll got in late last night from Iowa. Yeah, it was green. <laughs> you got a cold? You sound like you got a cold. How are the kids? Everything okay? Good. Yeah. No. Came in because I called a special session. It's important. No, it's important. Uh, well, yeah, okay. I'll try to come down in the wall and see you and the kids when it's over. Ross, it's important. Yeah, okay. Bye. <clears throat> She's just worried about me. She's it's all right, Huey. Homework. I'm accustomed to it. I'm accustomed to you. You didn't sleep again last night, did you? Yeah, yeah. It's a critical day, Eileen. They all are. But you can handle it. Good care of me. Well, it's my job. Mr. Weiss, here's your paper. You keep that. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. So they fire my boss today? Oh, they'll never catch Mr. Huey. He's too smart. Yeah. Hello, 
Hello, Seymour. Morning, Aileen. Morning. How is he today? Who can tell anymore? You know, I wish he'd come down the back stairs every now and again like we agreed. Why? You really think there's a paper in the state that we're printing? Aileen, some people don't love Huey the way we do. If he goes down, we all go down together. I know. What are we going to do about the deduct box? What about the deduct box? Huh. Everything in that deduct box is a voluntary contribution from loyal state employees who believe in the future of Louisiana. And the future of Huey P. Long? Two are one and the same. See, Seymour, what you don't understand is that you're talking to two different people here. One is Huey Long, just a senator. The other is, is, is bigger than that. It's bigger than you. Hell, it's bigger than me. Politics is the game of kings, and in that game, I am God. I don't want to hear any more about the deduct box. Everything in that box, everything. Costello's money, everybody's money, all the names, all the dates, everything is in there, Huey. So? Aileen handles the box. I trust her. She's a woman they could get to her. <laughs> It's the smartest man I ever met in a dress. Jesus, at least move the box. It's in that bank in Washington. I moved it. Nana. Nana. Where? God, this is a great day. Why a special session on Sunday afternoon? Oh, you better ask Governor Allen. He's the one to call the session. <laughs> How many bills do you plan to pass, Governor? 39. What about the Pavi bill? What, what about it? They say Senator Long's out to get it. What's that mean? They tell me that you've got to bring up that old rumor about him having nigger blood. They told you that, did they? Well, I'm not the one bringing it up. You are. You are. You said it. 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 Well, I'm going to miss this place. You didn't put my portrait in the basement here, did you? Well, now, Huey, I'm just keeping your seat warm while you stir things up in Washington. Truth be told, Oscar, the only one keeping my seat warm is old Franklin Delano. <laughs> Senator. 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 What? I, uh, I don't think you'll uh, remember me. Yes, I do. Antoine Dasbitt. And your lovely wife, Marie. Sir, you uh, promised us a uh, paved a country road in my parish. And was it? No, sir. I'll take care of it. Governor, looking to miss the Dasbrook problem, I promised this man a paved road. Okay. How did you remember his name? Damn if I know. It just popped into my head. Goddamn, they had a little boy died of diphtheria. Is everything going to run smoothly tonight? Absolutely. Including Pavi? Come on in, Senator. Oh, now, that's the thing to gerrymander. Judge Pavi out? I want him out. Okay. You're the Speaker of the Assembly. Get him assembled. The judge is highly respected. He's a sanctimonious old bastard. But I am... But nothing. You got the votes. Vote him out. Good travel. Thanks, boys. Hello. Remember that little bridge project we talked about in Paris? I can see. Thanks for coming in tonight. Thanks for seeing you keep pushing on this bill, and I swear to God, I'll see blood all over the floor of this chamber. I don't want to be here all night. Let's get this thing going.
You'd better do what he said. Next bill. Senate Bill 36, the redistricting of the 13th Judicial District, composed of St. Landry and Evangeline Parish, presided over by Judge Benjamin Pavey. Senator Dobard will speak on behalf of the bill. Careful. Same thing that happened to Judge Poppy can happen to you. Dirk, we did it, old son. King Fish has a long memory. Thank you. We don't want none. No, sir. My name is Huey Pierce Long. And my automobile over here, you know, I was wondering if I could come in and set a spell. You're not from the government, is you? Hell no. You got anything I could wash this down with? Well, come on in. The sorry truth of the matter is, ma'am, I'm a running for railroad commissioner. Oh. Is that a fact? I don't know what that is, but you got my vote and all my people the same <laughs> way. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. Y'all take care now, here. 
Uh -huh. We ain't never had a night like that. Uh -huh. He talked almost half the night. And them all people, they've been controlling me all the time. I didn't even know it. But he could charm the birds right out those trees. Hey, boy, did he eat all his squirrels? Just as pregnant as can be. What are you doing out in all this heat? Well, I'm campaigning for my husband, Huey Pierce Long. Oh. Here, let me give you a circular. It's going to be today at 11 o'clock. I hope that you'll be able to make it. He's a marvelous speaker. I'll let it go. Thank you so much. Now, remember my name? Huey Pierce Long. Again. Now, don't forget to tell your folks by name. Now, y'all won't be old enough to vote for quite a few more years, but when you do, it's... Huey Pierce Long! Where in the world are we? Well, we just left Donkey, <laughs> and we're on the road to Mansoor. <laughs> Oh, honey, why do you have to always drive like you were late for your own funeral? Because I don't want to miss one minute of the meeting. Well, one more bump like that, we're going to be delivering more than just circulars. Well, that's good, because folks trust a family man. <laughs> oh, cute. Look at these poor, pathetic people. They ain't got nothing but the road. Well, look at us. We ain't got much more. Well, I got you, darling. That makes me a king. How many more flowers we got to put up? Only about a hundred. One hundred? No, we gotta put up at least two hundred. Huey, I think we're running out of trees. <laughs> Situation. Someone as pink as you doing this for me. I'm Huey Long. I'm running for railroad commissioner. A politician. I might have known. Captain, yeah, there's a poll tax in this here state. I can't afford to vote. Go well, what? I'm here to get you out of the ditch. Now, you push, I pull. Man. What's this gonna cost me? I'm gonna need some more nails. You know, I still can't vote. Old tax is a dollar. Can. Does this mean I uh, gotta vote for you? Oh, you vote for whoever you want to. You just remember who got you out of that damn ditch. Well, well, 
what's this? Champagne. I didn't order it. On the house, sir. Congratulations. Whoa! Pour it up, son! Pour it up! All right! Hey, boys, try some of this swill. <laughs> you know about that judge in Plaquemine Parish? I think I can help you there. How so? Well, I know his daughter. Yes, and a lovely young thing she is. I know the one whose mama he didn't marry. And your name again is... Seymour Wise. Seymour, a love of Jew don't change his name. <laughs> this is my beautiful wife, Rose. Pleasure to meet you, man. Likewise. This is my brother, Earl. Good to meet you, Seymour. Yeah, you gotta watch Earl. He's something else. What exactly, we don't know yet. Yeah, he's that right, Earl. <laughs> Who are you? Well, sir, I'm someone who knows you are not destined to be railroad commissioner for the rest of your life. Mr. Wise. Let's you and me partake of some of this here champagne and talk about how you're about to get out of the restaurant business. Delighted. Low in the sacks, go marching in. Again together under this oak, where one of our forebears, Evangeline, waited for her lover, Gabriel, who never came. This oak, this oak is an immortal spot. The entire world knows about this oak from the poem of Longfellow. But Evangeline is not the only one who has waited here in disappointment. No, no. Where are the schools that you have waited for your children to have but never come? Where are the roads and highways that you have sent your money to build but are no closer now than ever before? Evangeline, Evangeline wept in her tears. That only lasted one lifetime. Your tears in this land and around this oak have lasted for generations. Will you let me dry the tears of those who still weep? Strangling the state of Louisiana. Now, I believe in killing snakes with the exception of my brother Earl. Excuse me, boss. I'm gonna go and be the new governor. My name is A.J. Bozeman. B-O-Z-E-M-A-N. I came out to see you today. Yeah, but why didn't he come, Earl? Who? Daddy. My old father didn't even come to my inauguration. He didn't even call. I don't know. You just got all the... You know, strong opinions. I know he's got strong opinions about everything. But didn't I do everything I was supposed to? I worked hard, I sold hard. Through law school in one year. Oh, you're, you're always in a hurry, are you? I don't know. I felt that breath on my neck. I mean, being used a full time job, he knows that. Don't worry, Earl. I'll always take care of you. Careful with that, 
over there, Shorty. You sure drink your pot like you make it big and strong, build up the muscles. Well, I will. I will. Governor. Governor. What do you want with the governor? A job. You come right to the governor's office? Well, sir, I, I, I figured that's where the jobs are. Well, you figured right. I said you figured right. Come in. What's your name? Aileen. You're old enough to have a last name. Oh. Ledlam. How old are you, Aileen? I'm, I'm, I'm 22. Is that a wedding ring, I think? Mm -hmm. Yes. How long have you been there? Three years. Did I get any babies? Uh -huh. No. Well, what can you do, Aileen? Secretary, you want. You take dictation? Yes, I do. How fast? As fast as you talk. Good luck, honey. Yes, sir. My name is Huey P. Long, Jr. Like any good patriot, I was born in the log cabin. I would get up before the sun to help my daddy. My sympathy has always gone to those who toil, and I have endeavored to help them. They say I'm a Karl Marx of the hillbillies. I know Karl Marx, but I do love the working man. Now you get that, type it up, and bring it in here when you're done. schools. Slavery's over. I know that and you know that, but we didn't run on it. Of course not. I wanted to win, didn't I? Well, maybe now's the time to be a little more cautious. Caution never got me any place. But did you want this? Thank you. Governor J.Y. Sanders. Huey, come on. Now, what do you suppose they're discussing? Greek philosophy? Oh, come on. Come on. Hey, Johnny, let's go bust up this cocktail party. Huey, what's the point? It'll be fun. Kevin. Well, hi, Governor. What you boys drinking? Well, here, let's just get old country bourbon. I thought y'all was a couple of New Yorkers. This. Is Huey Long. Well, oh, they know me. How am I doing, fellas? Am I keeping my promises? We are having a private drink. Private? You come in here with a couple of standard oil scalawags? Let me tell you something about your friends, J.Y. They treat Louisiana like some piddly ass South American country. They come in, they rape us, and they leave the people with nothing. 
Hell, this boy here. He even tried to bribe me. You hold on. But you know what, J.Y.? This guy had the good sense to bribe me late at night over the telephone. You? He knew he could buy you in broad daylight like some two-bit road horse. Well, you'd sell your mother's soul, you no-count, lying, low-life son of a bitch. How exactly do you mean that? Exactly like this. You bastards, let me go. Let go of me. Long, you yellow belly. Ah! Nice shot, <laughs> Told you it'd be fun. <laughs> hey, old son, who's a black button for you? Let go! Hey, come back here! never sleep and neither do my enemies. All right. Yeah. Kiss the kids for me. All right. Bye, baby. <laughs> ah, the king. Hello, <laughs> boy. Nah, go straight home. Well, no, we won't go over. No stopping off at no cat house. Go yeah, straight home. Right. They believe that. Well, I hope so. Seymour, you worry too damn much. Hey, hey, go home and get some sleep. Who's the kingfish? You're the kingfish. <laughs> what are you still doing here? Cleaning up a bit. You got made for that kind of work. Oh, I've been made. I've been made. I'm doing this because I want to. Because 
lot. So a small pan, you're gonna help the store. Yeah. And you're gonna pay roads. Is that all? Just fine, sir. That's good. See, these men come to work for me from the state penitentiary. Most of them are in the clink for stealing, but by and large, they was just stealing to put bread on the table. Unlike some other people I could mention. <laughs> what are you trying to imply, sir? Not a thing. Yes, Thank you, William. It's just that with free textbooks, someone like this man here might have had a decent shot at life. You can't give free books to niggers. Huh? I already done it. Look, the reason we're here is to protest the unfair treatment being given to our parents. It's like we're not part of the state of the Louisiana. These boys just don't get it, do they, Judge Powell? Mm. 
Maybe you should explain it to them. I mean, after all, you've been elected and re-elected in St. Landry Parish for 28 years. Our parishes get no state funding because we refuse to support your illegal and corrupt machine. And it's our people that suffer. Judge, I get the feeling that you don't like me. Don't flatter yourself. I detest you. Why? Because I'm not your kind of people? Now, you hear me. You and your people have scraped the bellies of this state clean, and all at the behest of Standard Oil, J.P. Morgan, and Mr. John D. Rockefeller, and I ain't gonna tolerate it anymore. <laughs> One of your political speeches. It's all politics, isn't it, Judge? Do you recognize this, Governor? My guess it's the Constitution of the state of Louisiana. Yeah, I figured you'd have to guess. Maybe you ought to read it. Read it. I am the Constitution! One day you're gonna end up on the floor, face down. You just wait and see. Remember the song, Rose? This was very popular the summer we were driving around on our first campaign. Of course I do. Huey. Don't. Please, don't come at me now, Rose. The hounds are closing in on me. I know. But you'll never hear. Huey. Huey, are you listening to me? Huey. Oh, damn. I am going away. I thank whatever gods may be. With the children. Invictus. Come here. Come here. I want you to understand. You built this home for us, Huey. Why are you never here? You stay in the Roosevelt New Orleans, the Heidelberg here. You keep your own rooms there. You keep your own company. I don't sleep. I get up, I write things down. I'm... Time is short for all I have to do, Rose, and no, I can't lead a normal family life. I have never asked you for a normal family life. Darling, I know it. But I was put on Earth to do something, and these people are snaking me to the ground. Now, I can't make it without you, now or ever. Been with me in every fight I've ever been in. Don't leave me, darling, now. Not now. You're a salesman, Huey. You're still a salesman. Upstairs, Huey. What are you going to do? Can I get you something, Governor? You could pour me a bourbon, Luther. You're a lifer, aren't you, Luther? Yes, sir. You wouldn't run away now, would you? No, sir. 
Did I catch me and bring me back? Yeah. If you did run, where would you go? See my wife and my children. Anything else, Governor? bodyguard H.A. Bozeman to murder Jared Y. Sanders, promising Bozeman immunity for punishment. That Governor Long has sought to bribe legislators, has boasted of his control over the judiciary, has misappropriated and misapplied state funds, illegally contracted loans, Huey! Where are you going? To the crapper. Go to crapper. Now tell me, Mr. Bozeman, exactly what did the governor tell you? He said, Bozeman, I'm the kaiser of this state. He said, that son of a bitch, J.Y. Sanders, is going to try to fight all my measures. I want you to get him out of the way. I want you, he said. I've chosen you to do away with this bastard. What was his condition at the time? Well, it was night. Was he drunk? Isn't everybody drunk at night? <laughs> but, but yeah, but he was shouting. Said, I mean, you'd kill the son of a bitch, he said. And if you found out, I'll give you a full pardon and many gold dollars. Many gold dollars? How many? I didn't ask, because I said I couldn't do it. Then what happened? I got fired. As the governor's bodyguard? No, sir. Off my job at the highway commission. <laughs> and you work at the state house? I do indeed. For 25 years. I've seen it all. Did you ever see Governor Long touch anything illegal? Yes. She was 17. It was a Christmas party. She was on his knee, riding him like a donkey. And how long did you stay and witness this? For hours and hours. It was disgusting. And you are cashier at the Union Bank? Yes, sir. In, in New Orleans. And you remember cashing a check endorsed by Huey Long for the sum of $6,000? Yes, sir. And who did you give that money to? I gave it to the governor's secretary. The, 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 oh, that's what she was at the time. Referring to the governor's brand new appointee for secretary of state? Yes. Miss Elaine Dumont. Oh, uh, uh, that was the name she took back after her recent divorce. And do you know what Miss Dumont did with the $6,000? She, uh, uh... She, yes, go on. She, she, she placed the money... She stuck it in, in, in her... Bazaar. All of the money? Yes, sir. This is a big bazaar. <laughs> Order! Order! That you... won't be enough! Excuse me, I'm Tom. 
John Frey from New Orleans. How do you feel about your husband's involvement with the testimony inside just now? Let's die! You don't question my wife, you son of a bitch! Take care of business. We're having a rally tonight. Thank you, thank you! Oh, the buzzards are back. The buzzards have returned. And they have come to gulp and gloat on the poor and the afflicted. But the demons of hell couldn't gloat. And they warned me, to be fair, they warned me that if I put a tax on the oil that they take out of all ground, they would impeach me and they're trying. And they're fighting me harder this time than ever before. But I'd rather go down to a thousand impeachments than admit that I am the governor of a state that does not dare to call the Standard Oil Company to account. Let me recite you a poem that has stood me through the harshest days of poverty, times of trial. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. And will I bow to them? Never! It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. What is the meaning of all this? Well, George, I'll tell you. There's some seriously misguided people in this state who think they're going to impeach the kingfish. Now, what I need are 12 signatures on this here piece of paper to block said proceedings. Congratulations, boys. You're my 12. offering us what I'm offering you gentlemen is your political wife longer is that two bit gonna keep me cool in my heels now this here mr. James Farley is a big man Franklin Delano Roosevelt's man yep he wants us to campaign for him just remember, Huey, he needs you more than you need him. You know, they say Irishmen make the best politicians, but Seymour, we haven't done too bad for a couple country boys. Hmm. Not so far. You know, it must be 100 degrees in there. How long are you going to make them wait? Just long enough to bluster. Jim. <laughs> you 
He's keeping me waiting. Intentional. I gotta go to Tulsa, and I'm dying to get there. Can you imagine? Dying to get to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Gotta be something wrong with that. Listen, if you want to talk against the governor, then why don't you say it to his face? Lady, I'd love to. Well, here he is. a living draw breath. God bless you, Governor. How are you, honey? Oh, just fine. Come on in here and let me fix you something. Uh, no, I have to sit and talk with these important men. Oh, okay. Huey. Hello, Jim. Who are these fellas? Oh, uh, my brain trust. <laughs> <laughs> How much time you got? Whatever you need, Huey. Well, Kingfish knows your time is valuable. Well, we know your time is valuable, too, Kingfish. <laughs> Did I ever tell you how I come by that name? No, but I think I'm going to hear about it in the next few seconds. <laughs> well, you see, the kingfish is a bird who eats the babies from his neighbor's nest, saves him a trip to the swamp. <laughs> anyway, what do you have in mind for me for the campaign? We were thinking about a tour, maybe. A tour across this fine country. Get me one of those special trains with some great big loudspeakers so I can whip up the masses for the great Franklin Delano Roosevelt. You ever whipped up a crowd, Jim? Have you? Have I ever whipped up a crowd? No. No, sir, I haven't. Now, what Mr. Roosevelt has in mind is a southern campaign. Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, and Georgia. Now, Mr. Farley, we both know that those states are already democratic. But, Mr. Long, we want you to just make sure. I think you want to make sure that I don't get any national exposure. Well, your man would have never got the nomination if it hadn't been for me. Party owes me. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time. Wonderful to see you again, Miss Mary Lou. Goodbye, Governor. Come back. First, we need the best. Best thing is to hand them over to the chief. He'll handle them. Come on, let's go cool off in Tulsa. Well, I don't know about the loyal part, Long. I would like to destroy you three ways to Sunday. I believe you know my lovely wife. Yes, indeed, she is lovely. And your husband is a horse's ass, madam. <laughs> Everybody's here, boss. Madam Secretary, may I have this? I told her not to come here tonight, but she is here. Huey, listen to me. Huey, we'll pay.
parents' sake, I think it would be a very good idea if you danced with your wife, Rose. You need to tell me to dance with your wife. I love dancing with my wife. I've always loved dancing with my wife. Some air. <clears throat> People are watching. This is not a good time. Seymour, you have to make up your mind. First, you don't want me to come, and now that I'm here, you don't want me to leave. Ailey, don't make a scene, please. Uh -huh. You are. Uh... I'd like to get that damn Huey in my sights. You and a lot of other people. If we just all gonna stand around here and talk about Huey Long, I'd rather go home and kick the dog. Well, we gotta do something. He's canceled three of my contracts. Hell, I thought by Huey going to Washington now, he'd be out of our hair. Nah, a thing like him never goes away. Human with that kind of ambition persists. He'll never let go. He'll still control the state from Washington now he's there. So, what are we going to do about it? Wait. Pull! Nice shot, Judge. Yes, sir. Corruption's got its own time block. Its own inevitable logic. And inevitable, it is. There's our taxes and debt, Judge. <laughs> hey, look who's here. Y'all know my son-in-law, Carl, don't you? Oh, you've hey. been studying medicine over in Europe, haven't you? Yes, sir, I have. Right. Just got back. Carl, good, good to, to see, see you. you. Good to see you. How, how things going over there? Well, they got a couple fellas over there called Mussolini and Hitler, so... Oh, <laughs> just a couple of two-bed rabble-rousers. You ought to see the rabble they're arousing. Hitler is surely just a European problem. No, so he's a world problem. Just like we got right here. Paul! If we change Bill 107 to add Amendment 33B, then the bill originally proposed without the 14 amendments. Point of order. Will the distinguished senator from whoever the hell he's from please yield the floor for one moment? I will reluctantly yield the floor to the junior senator from Louisiana. Thank you. Now, when I first came here to Washington six months ago, I felt that we were on a mission to save this country from the despair which is gripping it. But all I get is a good deal of dither and blather from both parties. Millions and millions of workers are out of work. Millions of farmers are losing their farms to the banks, and what are the banks going to do with them? 
Now you listen to me. Stop fooling around. Break up the concentration of wealth in this country and redistribute it according to the Lord's plan. Or if you do not, listen. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Weep and howl. Senator, what are you trying to do? Start a revolution? No, sir. I'm trying to wake you all up. Sir, you are not speaking for us. Well, if I'm not speaking for you all, I guess I'm speaking against you. The economy of this country is collapsing, and unless we do something about it, the people will be at those capital doors six months from now looking to string you scoundrels up. And unless you awaken, I'll be there tying the noose. See you, boys? The genuine Ramus Jan Fair, something this country is in a crying need for. Just like a real Democratic Party, none of this FDR crap. Hey, Duchess, where's the pecan? Yeah. Hey, where, where's the bathroom, man? <laughs> <laughs> The shine of that, huh? Yeah, damn it, I need some ice. Ice. Where the hell are you? I'm Frank Costello. Are you? Yeah. The hell am I doing in the crap of talking to Frank Costello? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, what are you going to say about that? Jumped from behind by one of J.P. Morgan's thugs. How's that sound? That sounds good. <laughs> you know, they tell me uh, New Orleans is a beautiful city. Well, come on down, son. Visit. I might. Are you really Frank Costello? I got friends down there. Did you ever kill anybody, Frank? Uh, Phil Castell, he's an associate. Phil Castell. Have you heard of him? It rings a bell, Phil Castell. I didn't mean it. You didn't mean what? About you killing somebody. Of course I have. Seymour White's your friend. He ought to know him. Who? Phil Castell, the Jews. So? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you see, there's a certain situation, right? And if your friend Seymour Weiss would speak to his friend Phil Castell, then. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, when are you going back down there? Soon. You know I'm a great admirer of yours. <laughs> yeah. Take care of that eye. God, I hate funerals. 
which relative is this again? My Uncle Albert, my daddy's brother. Were they close? About as close as anyone in my family ever gets. Did you talk to Phil Castell in New Orleans? Yeah. What do you want? Well, they want to put a thousand illegal slot machines in New Orleans. He told me to give you this. How much is that? I don't know. He said, you open it, there's a deal. You return it unopened, no deal. Give it to Ailey. Give it to Ailey. My campaign fund should put it in the duck box. You know how much is in it, Huey? She'll tell me. No, she will, will she? I trust her. You don't. That's the end of it. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. We'll see you under better circumstances. God bless you. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to show it, but he's taking it pretty hard. You haven't said five words to him. Don't you think you ought to go to him? He didn't come to me, did he? Huey, it's hard for a father to come to a son. Let's go to the car. Why'd you come here, son? Pay my respects, sir. Got a light? Earl tells me you're living in a hotel, not with your wife. Earl can go to hell. Earl ain't the one going to hell around here. What do you got against me, anyhow? Well, you made us out poor. Made out like you came from some dang log cabin. You know how hard I worked all my life. You never went hungry. Never had to wear hand-me-downs. You shamed us to your own ends. Hell, that was just politicking. That was just lying. See, you can't tell the difference anymore, son. You lie. You just lie. Sometimes you gotta lie. You gotta tell folks what they wanna hear. The truth is just too damn tough for most folks. And you know what? They want to believe them lies. Because life is so damn hard. I'm changing the whole world. You don't even know. That's fine. That's fine, sir. Changing the whole damn world. Nothing changes the world but the truth, Huey. I want to be president. God help us. I'm going to be president. I'm going to be president! My friends, this is Senator U.A.P. Long, and listen to me carefully because I have exciting news for you. You know how for most of you, your pocketbooks are empty, your bellies are tight? They tell us we are even faced with communism. Why not? When 1% of the people control wealth, I'm not a communist. I would not take a single luxury away. But when we reach a point where some men have so many millions that another hundred or so means nothing to them, we are going to have to siphon off some of the water for our own little pool. That's God's law. Look it up in Leviticus. Well, we are going to restrict the piling up of wealth in the hands of the few, and we are going to give it to the people. Now, this is a chance for you to make your voices heard in Washington. We have created an organization called Share Our Wealth Society, and we have prepared a pamphlet for it, and we can send it to you for free. And the whole plan is set forth in it. So I'm appealing to you. 
to organize a share our wealth society in your own community tonight or tomorrow and help me as your servant see that the government of this country is returned to the people. I see, Admiral. Then the guns you're talking about are mounted, I would say, right about here? Yes, sir, Mr. President. Uh huh. Molly. Oh, yes, good. Send him back. Huey Long is here to see you, Mr. President. Ah. Thank you, gentlemen. quite a stir here in Washington lately. Well, Franklin, glad you noticed. Mr. President. Mr. President, glad you noticed. Now, in a recent speech, you claim that restoring prosperity is as simple as the sun rising. Well, maybe the sun rises somewhat easier in Louisiana. Would you care to illuminate? What we have in this here country is people with too much money and poor folks just are begging to live to tomorrow. Now, what I would do would be to tax the hell out of the rich ones and give it to the poor ones. Very much like my own program, Senator. Uh, yes, Mr. President. But you haven't exactly enacted any legislation yet, now have you? We don't tax the Rockefellers. We don't tax J.P. Morgan. All the big oil companies, or, or you, do we? Senator, I want to be very clear on this. Because what the hell do you think you're doing? This country is not ready for socialism, Senator, nor should it be. We're already seeing enough of that in Europe. What with Mussolini and his crowd. Listen to you, you gotta play Senator. ball with it. Senator. You should show some respect. Senator to Long. And I resent the comparison to Mussolini. Oh, you're right. Mussolini runs an entire country. You just run a little backwater state. Not for long. Really? Let's talk about your little deduct box, shall we? Your own private bank account, shall we say. I think the Internal Revenue Service might be very interested in that little item. I didn't come here to be insulted. Well, unfortunately, it appears that's exactly what has happened. I'm leaving you now, Mr. President, but don't think for one minute that you can intimidate you alone. Pay no attention to him, Mr. President. He's just another corrupt politician. What difference does that make? People believe him. People trust him. Never underestimate your enemies, Jim. He's a menace with national ambitions and a threat to me. He's got to be stopped. Duchesne place. Okay, General, here's what I want you to do. Cordon off the vicinity around the Capitol, from Lafayette to Church, from Laurel to Government Street. Oh, damn. You really, all this really necessary? Shut up, Earl. They didn't try to kill you, did they? Now then. No newspaper can write anything against me. Uh, suspend the sale of firearms, institute a curfew. Oh, yeah. And I don't want to see any public gatherings. No crowds. 
Well, good lord, what constitutes a crowd? Two or more. What if there are three? Three in the crowd, it's a damn standard all right. Hell, doesn't anybody but me know how to impose martial law? You've got your orders, people, move! All right, all right. I want you to take these men. Get these freaks off. And then, early this morning, Senator Long's attempted assassin was caught and taken into custody. He's being held at the courthouse and has been identified as one Sidney Songi, a 37-year-old employee of the Standard Oil Company. How'd you do that? What's the matter? You're enjoying this, aren't you? Enjoying sticking it to J.Y. Sanders and the big old boys? That's your sweet patootie. Not talking. Huey, I'm worried about you, all these... all these troops and guns. You know, they caught the assassin. What are you doing? There never was an assassin. What? I planted him. He was my own man. You... You were never in any danger? Oh, no. They're gonna try to kill me. Hell, I know that. But not before I finish my work. You faked your own assassination? Give me a good excuse to call out the National Guard. Good idea, huh? Good idea. No, I don't. I don't think that's good. Huey, I think that's... It's insane. It's, it's madness. What, what are you trying to prove? Prove to the whole world who's in control. Make your rules, Huey. I make my rules. And you better learn that, Aileen. Here and now. If I don't. Get to see more on the phone in New York. Frank, well, we're all doing very well with the slot machines. Yes, we are. But the money's coming in too fast. That's a problem? Well, it could be a problem, yes. You said things are a little out of control, and... <clears throat> well, Huey's gonna run for the presidency. How can I help? That's why I'm here. See, the thing we know for sure is that Roosevelt has got something on us. So then we should get something on Roosevelt. You can do that. I can do anything. <laughs> I have something here. You are going to be astonished. Well, maybe nothing can astonish you anymore. A friend of mine attained this for me. And I would like your attention. A couple nights back, in the DeSoto Hotel, a whole bunch of people, including members of Congress representing Roosevelt, met in this room where a recording device had been planted, a recording device. And this is a transcript. Room 506, DeSoto Hotel, 9.07 PM. I want the senators to get this. Voice. All right. How is Huey Long going to be stopped? Voice. Ain't there a lot of people who'd like to see Huey dead? Now you listen to this because these Roosevelt people are talking about a United States Senator. Voice. I would draw in a lottery to go out and kill Long. It would take one man, 
One gun, one bullet. Voice. Single-handed. Voice. Yes, that's the only way to do it. Voice. I haven't the slightest doubt that Roosevelt would pardon anyone who killed Law. I read this language after midnight alone in my room, and I got a little shaky. But it is funny in the daylight. I will read that line again. Voice. I haven't the slightest doubt that Roosevelt would pardon anyone who killed Long. Voice. But how could it be done? Voice. Voice. The best way would be just to hang around Washington and kill him right in the Senate. I'll hear some more. Voice. I thought once that would be necessary. I don't think it is right now. So it looks like temporarily I got a respite in the matter. <laughs> Okay, boys. Make up the compartment, sir? Yeah, come on in. When we get to the morning? In the morning, sir. Where are you from? Northern, sir. Family there? Yes, sir. Wife, children? Two boys and a girl. So do I. You make sure they get a good education. Yes, sir. I got free textbooks for all the school children in Louisiana. Did you know that? Yes, sir. When you were governor, yes, sir. White and colored both. Did you know that? Yes, sir. I know that. Anything else, sir? No. Oh, wait. Do you know about my Share Our Wealth program, the clubs? What do you think of the program? Well, sir, I... Tell me. I know what you're saying. Rich folks got all the money. We got to share it out. Things aren't fair. Lots of things aren't fair. We have white and Negro share our wealth, but... Yes, sir. The import isn't just a question of color. Yes, sir. You could join. I know, sir. Good. Wait. You think I'd be a good president? Senator, it's all in your heart. This is bad. Who hit me? Pray for me, sister. Oh, my God, I'm hardly sorry for having offended thee. And I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. Oh, I kept straight from the others. The truck. 
All right, now, I want you to come out of the car. Yes, come on. Oh, Rose, you know, God ain't gonna take old Huey. Heck, God don't want to let himself get demoted. But, but, well, I heard that it was critical. The radio kept saying critical. Now, uh, here he is, a remarkable man. Ladies and gentlemen, all the packages, please stand back to the middle. He lit a remarkable laugh. Would you take the chillin' for me? <laughs> Frank, why don't you uh, go see what's going on outside? Did you know he moved the box? Consistent to the end, aren't you? That is my money, too. Goodbye, son. Darling. Did I do good? Yes, you did, darling. You did the best you could. I love you, darling. And I have a surprise for you. The children are here to say hello to you. 